Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike Ian intern Ned Reynolds in the studio looking towards the future in what should have been a Monday night game, which is now, again, Sunday at noon. Chiefs go to New England to face off with the Patriots. Ned Talk starts at 10. Uh, first question I want to ask, uh, Nick Bolton, it was his first game back after wrist surgery. He looked pretty good. He wasn't out there the whole time, but, I mean, when he was there, he was almost everywhere where the ball was. Well, he w- it was enough time for him to get his feet wet again because he hasn't played in, what, nine weeks, something like that. And I'm a little surprised he came back this soon. But he did, and Bolton has to be a key. Willie Gay was in there as well, and, you know, he's had persistent back problems. And as far as the injuries are concerned, the Chiefs go back on the field today, so Andy Reid will give probably a full injury report then. But right now, Pacheco, Smith, and Tranquil all listed as questionable for the game on Sunday. They need to be in there, need to be in there playing because they are all part of the Chiefs team and key elements. It isn't just one man. It is the unit and the way they work. And, yeah, you do get some additions and some subtractions from injuries and so forth, but you really have to have those guys in there. Drew Tranquil, especially, he's been instrumental this year. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Speaking of injuries, what are your thoughts on uh, Rodgers possibly playing this weekend? That's insane. You want to talk about coming back too quick? He is coming back at lightning, and that's an old cliche, lightning speed. This is transcontinental a light year speed. I, I I can't see him coming back at all this year. And here he is going to try to play again. Apparently, the way I understand this is his Achilles tear, while it did require surgical repair, may not have been quite as significant as everybody thought it was. Still, it's an Achilles tendon. And you're coming back uh, less than, what, two months? Two months after the surgery? Three months? Whatever it is? Hey, that's a quick time. Well, you can't you can't deny the fact the guy wants to play and he's been cleared mentally. Um, he's been, he's been <laughs> yeah, mentally and medically. <laughs> I don't know about the mentally part. Me- mentally is a question right now, but. <laughs> especially if he's willing to come back from an injury like that so quick. But God love it. We'll see what happens. Uh, we know we've got the Broncos nipping at our heels, one game behind the Chiefs, but uh, we don't have to worry about the Chargers anymore. Uh, Herbert's mm-hmm. out for the rest of the year. He is done. Justin Herbert had surgery on a finger, his index finger, passing hand. Uh, it was fractured in the game, the most recent game, and he is out. He's undergoing surgery, so he is out. He's being replaced by a guy, Mike, you may not be familiar with. His name is Easton Stick, S-T-I-C-K. Easton Stick was a very top draft choice from North Dakota State. In their great run of nine national championships, Easton Stick followed uh, several of the other outstanding North Dakota State quarterbacks into a competition, and he's going to be in that backup role. He's very good, good player. He's not Herbert by any stretch of the imagination, but don't sell him short. He can he can take that team to a victory. And the Chargers do have a high-powered offense. It just They're just not a very good team. Um, I don't even really want to talk about the NFL power rankings, or I, I didn't until I finally got brave enough to look it up. And uh, it's interesting because it really kind of depends on the rider. You've got Yahoo. You've got USA Today. You've got Sports Illustrated. Um, but, hell, some of them have put the Chiefs in the top five over Miami. I think more realistically, Chiefs at six. Bills at seven. That's the one that I put the most credibility in, the NFL, yeah. the NFL power rankings. And you're right, there are a whole bunch of them, and they're subjective. But in this case, the NFL really does put a lot of study into it. They don't mean anything, but the fact is the Chiefs are sixth where they had been, didn't drop precipitously at all. It's 49ers, Ravens, Cowboys, Eagles, Dolphins, and Kansas City, number six. But, gang, there's a long way to go and many things to overcome. So we'll we'll see how it ends up. But, again, those power rankings mean nothing. Still got four games left to play, my guys. Also, I don't think the Ravens are better than the Eagles. There's no Hmm. way in hell. Did you watch that game on Sunday? There's no way, Ned. Come on. This is the first offseason as a Kansas City Royals fan for myself. And so I've been watching what these guys have been doing in the offseason. And they finally got themselves a pretty good veteran pitcher, I think. He's he's not bad. He's been around for a number of years. 34-year-old Seth Lugo. And he comes over from the San Diego Padres, where he was 8-7 and seven last year with an ERA of just over 3. It's the earned run average that you really give a lot of credibility to with these pitchers. And his is pretty good. Lugo's been around. He's been, oh, campaigning since about 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. He is 
He's of Puerto Rican heritage, but he was born and raised in this country. And uh, he's born in uh, Bossier City, Louisiana, went to Centenary. Centenary gentleman, they're a, a Division Three team. And Lugo's pretty good. He can get it done. He's not overpoweringly fast, but he is clever. And he'll add to the Kansas City rotation. That's what they need, a key pitcher on their starting staff to carry them through. I think Kansas City is going to be a little bit better. I thought they would be last year, and they weren't. But they're coming on. They've got a lot of very good young talent. Bobby Witt Jr. is an outstanding player. So we'll see how things morph this year and whether or not Kansas City can keep their players intact. Looks like they're trying to be a little bit more aggressive, which is good for any fan base. Uh, Cardinals also trying to be aggressive. They are at least considering a contract from reports. What do you think about this? I'm a little bit puzzled by this one. The Cardinals are still pursuing Paul Goldschmidt. Now, Goldschmidt's entering his final year with the Cardinals. That means he's a free agent if they don't sign him at the end of the year. Well, the Cardinals want to re-sign him. Goldschmidt had a down year last year, and he is 36 years old. I put, I put a lot of stock in a player's uh, improvement and maybe a leveling off a little bit. Well, he didn't just level off. He went down. I'm at 36 years old. I'm a little surprised the Cardinals are doing that, but Mosellock knows what he's doing. He wants to sign him to an extension, and we'll see what happens. Goldschmidt's a very smart guy. He's been around a long time. He's not demonstrative. He just hits the devil out of the baseball when he is in his prime. But we'll see whether or not that exists. But that's who the Cardinals are pursuing right now in terms of contract extension. Does Mosellock know what he's doing, Ned? <laughs> uh, St. Louis Blues, we haven't checked in on the hockey boys in a minute. Uh, not so great for the start to the season for those well, They guys. lost to the Detroit Red Wings last night 6-4, to four, and that dropped the Blues below the 500 market. 13 wins, 14 losses, and then an hour and a half after the game ended, they fired their coach. And this is the coach, Craig Berube, who took them to the Stanley Cup, their only Stanley Cup championship in the history of the franchise, and he's... You know, Barubi's he's hes not Mr. Personality, but he's a tough guy, and that's what hockey is built on, tough guys. I'm a little surprised that the Blues decided to make a change, but they have. They brought up a minor league coach to take them through the rest of the season, a guy from the American Hockey League. But Barubi's pretty good, but they let him go, and we'll see how things change if they do for the Blues. You might remember they made a change and the year they won the Stanley Cup, they were below, back then, not only below 500, they were in last place. Statistically at the start of the speaking, year, and they what, came back and won the double gone thing. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how things change. Fingers crossed, but uh, I could see this last year that it was an issue and it started at the top and they just could not get it going. And I had a feeling maybe this would happen before it started, but you know what? Let's just do it in the middle of the season, Ned. You have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.